Love Beyond Death, The Sacrifice of Alcestis and the Heroism of Heracles. A story from Greek mythology. The cold, heavy silence of the underworld pressed in on all sides, broken only by the faint, echoing footsteps of a lone figure. Alcestis, her form pale and ghostly, moved with hesitant steps through the realm of the dead. Her heart, though stilled by death, was heavy with sorrow and longing. She had sacrificed herself for love, for her husband Admetus, trading her life for his, and now she wandered through the shadowy domain of Hades, awaiting her eternal fate. But this story does not begin with Alcestis in the underworld. It begins on a sunlit day, in the palace of Phyrae, where Admetus the king sat in stunned silence, his heart gripped by fear and despair. His wife, Alcestis, the woman who had given up everything for him, was gone. She had died in his place, fulfilling the cruel bargain he had struck with the fates. It had all started with Apollo, the god of the sun and music, who had been condemned to serve Admetus as punishment for offending Zeus. During his time in the mortal world, Apollo had grown fond of Admetus, and when the time came for him to leave, he decided to grant the king a gift, an escape from death. The fates had decreed that Admetus would die young, but Apollo, using his divine influence, convinced them to allow Admetus to live if he could find someone willing to die in his place. Admetus had been confident that someone in his court, perhaps even his ageing parents, would volunteer. But when the moment of truth arrived, none were willing. None, except Alcestis. Alcestis had stepped forward, her voice steady but her eyes filled with a deep, unwavering love. She would die for him, she declared, because her life meant nothing without him. Admetus, though torn by guilt, had allowed it, desperate to cling to the life they had built together. And so Alcestis died. Now, as Admetus sat in his empty palace, the weight of his decision crushed him. His people mourned their queen, but none grieved as deeply as Admetus, who realised too late the true cost of his life. He had lost the one person who meant more to him than anything in the world. Meanwhile, in the underworld, Alcestis wandered the dim, lifeless plains, her soul weighed down by her love for Admetus. She had expected to feel peace, having fulfilled her vow, but instead, she was haunted by memories of the life she had left behind. The underworld, with its endless shadows and silent spirits, was no place for love, and yet her love for Admetus burned as fiercely as ever. It was in this state of despair that she caught the attention of Persephone, queen of the underworld. Persephone, moved by Alcestis's devotion, brought her before Hades, the lord of the dead. Alcestis stood before the dark throne, her gaze unyielding despite the overwhelming presence of the god who ruled this desolate realm. Hades, intrigued by her courage and the depth of her love, considered her fate. Persephone, with a soft, knowing smile, whispered into her husband's ear, reminding him of the rare and powerful bond that love could forge, even in the land of the dead. Hades, moved by her words and by Alcestis's silent resolve, made a decision. Return to the world of the living, Hades decreed, his voice echoing through the shadowy halls. But know this, such a gift is not granted lightly. You will be returned to your husband, but only if he truly understands the worth of the life you gave up for him. Back in the mortal world, Admetus was inconsolable, tormented by the emptiness of the palace without Alcestis. His heart ached with regret, his every breath a reminder of the price she had paid. He wandered through the halls, her absence like a ghost that haunted every corner, every room. It was in this state of despair that he was visited by a stranger, a traveller who appeared at his door, seeking shelter. Admetus, bound by the ancient laws of hospitality, welcomed the stranger in, offering him food and drink despite his own sorrow. As they spoke, the stranger, who was none other than the great hero Heracles in disguise, saw the depth of Admetus's grief. He asked Admetus why he was so burdened, and the king, unable to hold back his anguish, told him the whole story of how Alcestis had died in his place, of how he now wished he could have traded places with her. 
Heracles, moved by the tale and by the genuine sorrow he saw in Admetus' eyes, resolved to help. He revealed his true identity and promised Admetus that he would bring Alcestis back from the underworld. Heracles, known for his strength and bravery, was determined to face even the Lord of the Dead to reunite this pair whose love had touched his heart. Heracles descended into the underworld, his presence causing the shades of the dead to recoil in fear. He strode confidently through the shadowy realm until he stood before Hades and Persephone. With a voice filled with resolve, he demanded the return of Alcestis, arguing that her love was too pure, too powerful, to be confined to the land of the dead. Hades, having already been moved by Alcestis's own courage, listened to Heracles's plea. He knew that Heracles was not one to be easily denied, and he also knew that Alcestis's sacrifice had indeed been out of pure love, a love that transcended even death. And so, Hades allowed Alcestis to return to the world of the living. But he warned Heracles that Admetus must truly understand the value of the life that had been returned to him, for such a gift would not be given again. When Heracles returned to the mortal world, he brought Alcestis with him. But before revealing her to Admetus, he tested the king one last time, asking him if he had learned the true worth of what he had lost. Admetus, now fully aware of the depth of his wife's love and the enormity of her sacrifice, tearfully admitted that he would have given anything to bring her back, that he would have gladly traded places with her if it meant she could live again. It was at that moment that Heracles revealed Alcestis, alive and well, standing before him. Overcome with emotion, Admetus fell to his knees before her, promising that he would never again take their life together for granted. Alcestis, smiling through tears, embraced him, and the two were reunited, their love stronger than ever before. And so, the story of Admetus and Alcestis ends not with death, but with a love that defied even the grave, a love that proved itself stronger than the powers of the underworld, and that would live on unbroken for as long as the fates allowed. The gods, in their high thrones, looked down upon the mortal world, knowing that they had witnessed something rare and precious, a love that could transcend even the boundaries of life and death, woven by the hands of fate, yet strong enough to challenge it.